Welcome to another episode of The Quantum Woman. I'm your host, Shamina Taylor. And in today, we have uh, an amazing um, guest. And just hang tight. You guys are going to get so much information. But I also feel like you're going to get a shift from listening to this podcast episode. She is one of those women that when you meet her, you're like, wow, you're like so down to earth. You're so real. And yet you're so successful in such a powerhouse. And this guest is Elena Cardone. Uh, Before I introduce her and give her her bio, which is so long, I want to tell you something. I met her like a year ago. And, you know, when you meet really powerful women, the first thing I do is I gravitate towards them because if I see a woman doing something, I'm like, if she can't, I can. And I go towards her. And I'm so glad that I went and introduced myself to her and connected with her because it's been one of those experiences that she is like, I saw a side to her that I can see possible for myself and how I am living my life. And I got the pleasure of, um, being invited down to her VIP day. Um, and you guys are going to learn more a little bit about that, but, um, building an empire. And when I was down there, it was so, it was so amazing because I saw another side of her that I don't think maybe her audience knows about. And I think you guys in my audience will really appreciate that this woman is so much more like us than you realize, but she's so ahead of us in so many ways that we have so much to learn from her and you'll get information about her um, Bay event. She's got more of them coming up in the uh, upcoming months. And I, I, I would say if you are looking to build an empire with your significant other, this is definitely an event you should attend. Um, you will learn so much. It's it's packed with so much information. Okay. So Elena Cardone, let's, let's introduce her. And if you haven't read her book too, you should. Elena Cardone started a career in Hollywood and soon became a successful model and actress in film and film fame. Okay. She she's gorgeous and she's been acting a lifelong competitive sh- uh, sports shooter. And I can't read really well. So just listen you, up. You and now do wife- not have to even read all this. I think my team puts together this bio basically so I can hear it and feel good about myself. I think wh- how you introduced me was already off the rails. Amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm good now. I feel good about myself after your introduction. <laughs> well, what I want you guys to know is that she is, there's something you're going to get from this podcast episode is that she is a powerhouse and her and Grant are able to be in their power at the same time. And I want you guys to hear the story of how she manifested him, how she brought us into life and how she created this billion dollar idea in their business, because I do believe she's the brains behind it. So welcome Elena to the show. I'm so grateful and honored to have you here. Well, it is a bigger honor for me to be here. So thank you for having me today. Okay. So, um, Lena Rose, is that what your, uh, your name is? Rose, Lane Rose. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She was born in Louisiana and some of you might think that she was, no, wait, wait, where are you born? I was born in Madrid, Spain, Madrid, Spain. She grew up in Louisiana. Her parents were over there, but you can't speak Spanish, right? Even though you were born there. No, but I'm trying on Duolingo, but I'm an absolute disaster. So, you know, but I keep going, I keep trying. (laughs) My family's from South America and they're like, oh, you should speak Spanish. I'm like, yeah, no, my kids know more than I do, like from school. Mm -mm. Yeah, I I know. Right. Yeah. So she is from Louisiana and she, you think she grew up with a lot of wealth, but she didn't. And so I want you guys to really hear how she created this, because if this woman can, then there's possibility that maybe others can too. So Elena, I love your story, how you shared about how you manifested grant. Let's just get into this. I mean, the list, like, tell us how it happened and what what went down. Okay. So first of all, yes, I did not grow up with money. We grew up very middle class. I never was poor. We never, I I didn't sleep on a dirt floor, but um, in our household, we were always struggling for money. Um, It was literally paycheck to paycheck. And I just remember the constant strain and stress in our family over money. And so I had made a conclusion. Uh, My mom was a sole breadwinner of our family. Uh, My father, who was amazing, fought in World War II, but he could not ever come back and assimilate into civilian life. And he never held a job. He was, um, you know, embarrassed by that. We tried to kind of cover it up and kind of lie that he had these jobs or whatever. Um, And and, and I hate to even say that now because he's passed away. I feel like he can't defend himself or anything. Not that there is anything to defend. It just is the way it was. It was, it was an incredible father, but 
So my father, before he married my mother, was, um, and this is why I shoot guns, because he was an advent sporting clay shooter and won a world championship. And so I think, I think he thought, um, you know, marrying my mom and having kids, even though that was fulfilling, kind of ruined maybe his life or that particular life of celebrity or whatever he could have maybe gone down now my mother so he was always like told me never depend on a man um because I think that's why because he maybe it would lead to my dreams being crushed and my mother was like never depend on a man because she couldn't really depend on him for any income so i was reared to be the strong independent powerful woman never depend on a man for anything so now you're asking me about the list and how that manifested well it i was a self-proclaimed i had moved to los angeles alone when i was 17 years old to pursue acting and modeling and i didn't know anyone there it was a bold move, but considering where I had come from, from New Orleans and the lifestyle I had been leading um, since I was 14, um, you could see that that was actually a safe move um, and one that really I used to get me out of that environment that I was living from those teen years. So now I am a self-proclaimed, never depend on a man. I'm never getting married and I don't want a family. And then Grant comes along. Um, I'm in my late 20s at this time. I'm happy. I'm shooting guns. I'm ranked 10th in California. I work um, on hot rods. I've, I've rebuilt cars. I hang out with the guys all the time. I'm just, that was my life. Then Grant comes into my world and I'll tell you why. Because one day, and I, and I, and I used to have a lot of guy friends. I just always, I don't know. I just, I was always this tough chick. I never let anyone see me cry. I was always like, F you. I don't need guys. Like I always had this really tough exterior, but I was like really fun. Um, but one day my, one of my friends, my girlfriend, right. She invites me to go hang out with a bunch of girls. And like, that is already like an eye rolling experience. Cause I don't ever feel like I fit in. This was back then, not now I'm very different now. Now I need women. I just want to be around women. I identify with women. I'm like, Jesus, get me some women in my life. But anyway, back then it was a different story. So I go to one of these like girl parties and the girls are sitting around, we're drinking wine and, 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 and they're like, write a list and, 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 and of the perfect man that you want. Again, this is just so cringy to me, but I want to participate and fit in. So I write this whole entire list and, and then we have to roll it up and stick it in a necklace and wear it until the necklace falls off of our neck and then the guy appears. And I did, I wore the thing until that little copper cylinder thing turned my neck green and the, the, the string or whatever wore off and it broke off. But the irony of the story is, is I wrote over a hundred items. I had never looked at it before because I was like, why do I want a guy? I don't know, you know, but I looked at this thing and I wrote ethically ambitious. Like I wrote just over a hundred items that I wanted and the tiniest little ink and rolled it up. But what occurred to me was this massive cognition that had never occurred before I had that moment, which was the girls were sitting around and they wrote their list. And I felt like it could have just been my, it might not have even been real, but my observation was that everyone felt entitled to this perfect guy because they're just women and they were just entitled to it. But I had a different realization. I looked at the list and I thought, wow, this is the perfect guy. Like this, if the, if the cognition became, if this guy actually existed, then I could be with a guy like for the rest of my life, maybe, because that is the perfect guy. And then I was like, well, wow, because that wasn't even a concept for and then I looked at, well, wait a minute, if I just created this perfect guy and he were to write the list of this perfect woman, what would she look like? So while they were off like doing whatever, drinking the wine and all this, I wrote another list from his point of view 
of what that woman would look like in his ideal world. And at the time it was like, well, she would be monogamous. She would want to be in a relationship. She would want to be married. She would want to have kids. She would work out. She would take care of herself. You know, what would a guy want? You know, she would take, you know, blah, like from a guy's point of view. And I looked and she doesn't drink alcohol and hang out in bars. All of this stuff is what I was doing in my late twenties. I was, I realized that this perfect guy that I wrote down would never in a million years show up in my life because I was not that girl that was going to be on his list. Like we just would be crossing in the, in the night because we weren't going to see each other. I wasn't going to be good enough basically to show up on his radar. And that was the first time I said, wait a minute, I want to create the best version of myself so that if I decide this guy actually exists, that we can find each other and actually make this thing work. Now, what's ironic is right after I finished that initial exercise, Grant came into my life, but I wasn't who I was supposed to be. And out of the over a hundred items that I wrote on the list, the first two I wrote down were six, two and green (laughs) eyes. The only two that Grant are not on the entire list. He was everything else, but not six, two and green eyes. So I never saw him and nor could I see him because I still wasn't that girl, but he saw me. And then for the Next 13 months after that, he was pursuing me, leaving messages on my answering machine with zero return phone call. Anyway, that's a whole other story. But finally, after I had done 13 months of work on myself, I cleaned myself up. I wasn't drinking alcohol, wasn't hanging out in bars anymore. I started to really do self-enhancement work on myself. And after the 13 months, after he kind of got into the circle through a friend and whatever, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's quite tricky. Um, but after we became friends, like real friends, not friends with benefits, like friends, friends, that's when I realized, oh my God, like, this is the guy on my list. And he was like no other man I had ever been with. Like he just, it was, that's another magical, amazing story and now we've been to we've been married almost we've been together for over 20 years but married almost 20 years and you know in that time there's ups and downs in a marriage but the the role that we're on right now has 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 been re-energized revitalized I feel like I fell in love with them recently like in the last year all over again and never thought that was possible that you could get butterflies or feel that new in love feeling. I just thought, you know, those days were over, but I mean, Grant and I have this great thing and we're, you know, I'm in love with him and we've got this thing. Like, of course, like I'm not, I'm not going to go like leave him for somebody else, but I just didn't have the reality for myself that I could actually recreate with him a whole in love thing again. And that's where we are now in our relationship. That's amazing. I absolutely love the story. You guys get her book and she does go into this deeper about their stories. If you haven't read it yet or listened to it, go download it and get it. But I wanted to ask you a question. Like, cause I, I knew you told the story, how he asked for 13 months. I'm like, why did you say no? You know? And I, I didn't realize it was because you didn't feel like you were ready to receive him yet. Or is it just that you said no, no because you, you were like, he wasn't the guy like what, what was the no? Cause I mean, after he rented out what he did was he rented out a shooting range and she couldn't say no to that. So he knew what her thing was. And, um, so she's like, okay, fine. Like, yes, you got my heart. Cause I will go the place she went to all the time. And he privately, you know, he, he rented it privately for her, but, and then you had a moment where you saw the car on your, your, your wrist, you gotta, you gotta go listen to the stories, but she had these realizations like this. He was the guy. So w- why'd you say no? Like, what was the no? Like what made well, you say no? Because first of all, I had been in LA as an actress and a model since I was 17. Now, again, I'm in my late twenties. So I, I've been, I was, I was, you know, I had hung out with artists, with actors, with musicians. There was a radio station there called pirate radio. I was a pirate radio Harley girl. So I hung out with, you know, my roommate dated Steven Adler from the drummer from guns and roses in the height of the guns and roses era like that, that's just the life I was around, around kind of rock stars, actors, 
And when I met Grant, I was shooting a commercial shoot in downtown Los Angeles. He was friends with the director. I saw him on the shoot. Um, it, he just, it, it was like, uh, like <laughs> he looked like a businessman to me. He was short. You know, I, I had been, it wasn't that I needed to be with a tall guy. It was later when I realized where does that come from? Why did I want someone tall? It really came from in my past wearing heels around guys that I kind of went on dates with that wanted me to be shorter and wear flats and like where I felt big and I like to feel like small and dainty, but I still like to be in my heels and height. And, and then when, when I was around Grant, I realized like he is such a big giant being. I never felt him as being short per se. And I never felt like I was bigger than him. Like I felt like he was strong and masculine and he's got this big old thick neck and, you know, these broad shoulders. So, so I realized that, that the, the height really wasn't my issue. It was just, I didn't want a man trying to make me be smaller when my physical body is not. So, um, so that's why I didn't see him. You know, it wasn't that I wasn't ready to receive him. I just thought, he was not my type. He, it, it, it was just like, yeah. that is not what I was used to being attracted to with any, like none of it. So, and um, now you guys are like the massive power couple out there, which is incredible. So that's, so now you, you ladies, you see, you have to make the list. It's definitely make your list if you're single. And even if you're partnered up, I mean, you still can still like Lelena said, you know, fall back in love with her you know, your significant other again, which I know many of you, um, you know, are desiring to do. I, um, I want to ask you about this because I tell the story a lot about you. And when I heard you speak in San Diego, I'm like, oh, she is the one that held the vision. Like as Elena was in her feminine, she was the vision holder and, you know, Grant was the executor, but I want you to just explain like when you had that idea, like how did that come about? I know you have a lot of ideas and not some like they're, they're the things that really propelled the business forward, but you being in your power and being the strength for him, I feel like a lot of women have a hard time being able to be in their power at the same time in their, in the relationships. It always seems like one, it seems like it's imbalanced. And I feel like you have a great way of explaining it. And then how this vision came about, if you could share, that would be awesome. Yeah. And I really don't ever want to take credit for what Grant has done or, you know, I know you said, and I love to hear it, like the brains behind it. And I wish I could take credit for that. I am really like a visionary and I really yes. do. And I have owned my, um, my supporting role, which is like hard to, it was hard for me to grasp and swallow in the beginning, which is why I really had to look up. What does it mean to support? And I've really like gotten okay with that. So, you know, in, in that, I realized, well, my strengths is the visionary and to flow like confidence and vision and, and power and into Grant, who is really good at him becoming the brains behind the mechanics of how to execute on getting stuff done and what has to be done. And then he is a doer and an executor and a, and a scrapper and can handle difficult conversations. All of my weaknesses, he's really strong at. And so, you know, for me, it was just being able to be the person strong enough to push him to really own his potential in his area and in his domain, and then really being okay with, you know, letting him shine in his greatness and, and not feeling like something got taken away from me because he's shined in what he has created for himself. And when I really looked at, you know, the power of us and two and, and we, his successes and his wins are mine as well. And, um, and, and so it's just, it's just not the, the ideas of what I originally thought it would have to be either, or I realized, isn't that like he can shine, I can shine, we can shine, um, but yes, I was the one that was definitely had the vision and the idea that he needed to become a billionaire and why that was twofold. It was because 
A, I felt like the people that I had met that were billionaires were disappointing, quite frankly. B, I felt like he could help more people. I'm his biggest fan. I believe his products could help people. I've been helped by his products. I'm his biggest fan. So for him to not being on the world stage and trading his products and services with people so they could change their lives was a transgression or a sin, I believe, to us and to him. So I pushed him in that direction to really like, like that's your target. Playing these small games is, is so far beneath you, but it's also um, antagonistic towards us as a couple because your power is there. It's either going to be directed for the good or that power is going to be directed at me. So greedily, you know, I didn't want that hostility or that power to find its outlet into fighting me. And so when I was really able to say, this is what you're going to do. This is what I'm going to do to support you in doing that. These are the people that you're going to help. This is, this, these are my ideas. We'll do Cardone Capital. We'll do Cardone uh, Licensee Program. We got to get you well known around the world. Da, da, da. Now, what do you think of these ideas? Most of my ideas get laughed at and are put on the chopping chopping for floor or whatever but um but when they do take off he really takes them to the next level and that's what we've been able to do that's been so beautiful and as as a result of that i always make this joke that i ride on his coattails i have no shame in that i you know i am i am willing to captivate and use and abuse uh, his audience for for my gain which is now the stage 2 of of my life, which is now I can actually, I have experience statistics behind me of everything that I've done behind the scenes and now with children and what I've learned and how, anyway, I feel like I have my own content, which of course is, is our contacts, our umbrella, everything kind of goes to the same thing, right? Our, our own eco 10 X system here. Um, which he is able to help me with because he's built such a massive audience that now I'm anytime I'm able to help the 10 X ladies and, and any other women empowerment groups, I am like, yay, I have my shining light and where I really feel on my purpose line and can contribute um, in another way. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so many things I want to ask you. So I want to make sure I keep on track because I know you're a busy woman, but one of the things that I, I really love about you is that you have such a big heart. I, I mean, you're just such a, like a very emotional, loving woman. And um, I see that you, as you being a mother, but I also see that as you like nurturing the women in your audience too, and supporting them, it's like, there's such a strong, powerful women's um, movement and empowerment that you're doing that I, I just... I, I want to be a part of this is why I brought you on the show. And, you know, I really feel like that we are the blueprint for our life and business, like what, how we do one thing is how we do everything, you know, how we show up, what we say, our integrity, how we live our life. And I feel like you are an example of that. And I don't feel like, I mean, you started out here and now you're like up here, like you had to really require excellence of yourself every single day. It's like, you never can let your foot off. You have to put yourself at that, that, that level. And I feel like your relationship has been such an example of that, you know, where you have, you, you treat that also, like it's something, it's not just a partnership. It's just, it's beyond that. It's like also that level of like excellence. So when someone's trying to build an empire, you know, you, you went from having four years, you said, I think in your book where you were like in this relationship where everything was fine. And then after that, something shifted and changed in you where you were like, no, we have to go play on a different level. Like, what was it for people who are out there? Like, how, did, what's the first, first thing they could start looking at internally so that they can see like, where are you now and where you want to go next? Because you made that shift and you've been committed to that over and over and over again for the last, you know, 15 or so years. Right. Right. Well, the shift became the first four years of our marriage. I was doing me like me, 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 and not really looking at the power of two, like, you know, and, and then we had that shift when the economy collapsed in 2008, we were on the verge of losing everything. I'm pregnant with our first child. It made me confront the, the, the voices inside of my head, the women empowerment group that was living inside of my head that was like, oh, you can't support a man. That's like, you're that, that, that's just, that was the most hideous idea or concept 
I could have said to myself, you know, the, and those voices were like, oh, you're so stupid. He's going to leave you for somebody else. And you can't depend on him. I mean, it took everything in me to just go, you know what? I'm married to the guy already. I can depend on him. I find the one you trust and build an empire. He's the one I'm going all in on him. I'm going all in on us. And from that point on, I real, I, I feel like I had been married for four years, but as an idea and a concept and the four years in when I had that pivotal moment where I had to confront and make some choices, I traded in the acting career in order to become this woman that I have become today. And the, the, the element or the key piece that I've been and help supporting build this thing, I just made that shift. And I was like, you know what, I'm going all in on us. And the fortification made us stronger together. I give 100% in my role and everything I'm supposed to do. He gives 100%. So we're operating at 200%, not a 50-50. I'm expected to, to be competent in my areas every single day. And I expect that of him too. And that's the beauty of when you dig for gold in yourself, you can dig for it in others too, because why don't you deserve to have that around you if that's what you want? So um, how did we do it? That's when we started to look at, okay, well, what, what is the vision of who we want to be in the future? What do we want to, what do we want to be? Do we want to be the fighting couple or do we want to be the power couple that's influencing and helping change the world and the trajectory of others? And then, okay, let's reverse engineer from that picture into, um, present time. I'm, I'm taking myself back in time when we had nothing, right? This was the start. Cause you just asked me how, how did someone start? They, we, we had this picture, this vision, we're billionaires, we're known, we're, we've helped a bunch of people, we're doing events, we're this, we're that. At the time, we weren't doing any of that. We were on the verge of losing everything financially, like going broke. And then we just reversed engineered into who we had to become. And that looked like we needed to get on the same page. We needed to have each other's back. We needed to stop fighting each other because that game is too small. If you don't have enemies out there that you have to fortify and fight against, you're playing too small. If, if And that's what we found ourselves. We were playing too small. Our game was to titter tat back and forth with each other, small games. I was like, nope, this is the big picture. This is where we want to go. I have have your back anybody that came in I was like boom 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 like shooting them off you know I have that that guy's back you know that mfers back and he's got mine and we're gonna win at this game and then it just became figuring out who does what in the relationship knowing our roles right so that we could just best serve each other pushing each other up the up the mountain till till we got to the top now we got to the top we got to the first target, the massive first target. Now, now of course, there's another mountain that we we uh you know want to get to the top of, and and so we're playing the game all over again in a new unit of time with reset targets. So it makes it interesting and gives us a game and keeps us active and interested. You know, I want to ask you questions that other people would aren't going to ask you. So I've asked you stuff that people already can probably read and know about you out there. So that's great. You guys, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't read up on her, you can know a little bit background on her. But if you have, how do you hold the faith, Elena? Like really, like when you are in the self-doubt sometimes comes up, and this is something that sounds so basic to other people, but for you to hold a vision for a really long time and have that belief in self, I have so many successful women, like, I mean, they have they're doctors or they're lawyers. They're very, very successful. And they still sometimes struggle with their worthiness. You know, I grew up kind of rough and tough like you did too. And I always had to keep, keep reaffirming to myself who I am and what I, what I'm doing here and to keep going. And I mean, it becomes a daily practice almost sometimes to just believe in myself grander than I could. And, but I'd like to hear from you, like you have some things really figured out as far as like what success looks like at holding that vision. And a lot of the times they come to me to help them believe and hold the vision when they can't, when that's what mentors are for. But I would like to know how you do, how you, how you do do this daily. Like what is your practice and how do you talk to yourself? You know, I still have different issues or, you know, self-doubt and insecurities. I'm taking on new, new endeavors all the time. I, I have insecurities. The, the thing that I do differently is from my, one of my greatest mentors, which is L. Ron Hubbard came up with the philosophy 
um, be, do, have. And when I really understood the concept of be, do, have, my world changed. And so, and, and that, and this is what I'm about to tell you. And it's what I just said, but I'm going to expound on it a little bit further. So let's take, a, you know, an actress or let, let's just say billionaire, because not that everyone wants to be a billionaire, but it's easy to, for an example, for the story. So in my mind, I've been a billionaire for the last 14 years, even though I never had bank account to, to, to validate that because of this concept here. What do you want in your future? And I wanted that in our future because I thought, wow, if we were that, then we would have elevation for people to want to listen to us, to get the word out, to then be able to help them about financial literacy or about families or this or that. So, you know, every, and, you know, it, it just would set us apart. If we're going to teach about financial literacy and legacy, don't we have to be in an, like an elevated stratospheric um, status in order to really be g gain attention, right? So th that was the picture that I wanted to have, right? And then reverse engineering, you have to do the actions. It isn't just meditate on it or think about it. I'm not knocking those <laughs> things, but a lot of people do the visualization and they think it's just going to appear. No, there's a doingness. And the most important thing is the beingness, be, be, be. Like, what is the beingness right now of a billionaire? What is the beingness right now? If you want to be this confident, strong, powerful woman in the future. Who do you have to be right now? If you want to have a family, who do you have to be right now? You'd have to be monogamous, whatever, whatever it is that, you know, like how I had to be in that moment in order to pull Grant in. I couldn't be the party girl, you know, hanging out with all the guys, like, you know, making out with five guys a week. Not that I did, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like who, who do you have to be like a billionaire? If I'm wearing the, the, the role of a billionaire, um, uh, it doesn't mean be stupid and spend money that you don't have because billionaires aren't stupid with money. But if I'm being the role of a billionaire back in the day, right, if I make a phone call and, I, you know, I get a rejection on the phone, uh, the if, if I'm living from the future, and I'm and and I'm and and I live from the future to the present. The the, the problem that your people, um, your your community is having is y'all are and and I did this too until I disconnected. You're living. If you're having a problem holding the vision, it's because you're living from the past. You're living from the past, the present to the future, but the future is always from the past. I failed. I wasn't good enough. I started this program and I didn't finish it. It comes from losses. Like you, 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 you never get to the future because you're always looking at the past and then you're always pulling yourself Thanks. back by this anchor of losses and failed purposes and all the times you you failed right but if you actually you know time is all made up first of all time yes. is made up uh, 365 days in a year the, the the 12 months it's all created man made it so so why 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 am i locked into past present and future just because that's the agreement we all made why can't it be future present like to to to, to right now like so if you if you 1 million percent are are a million percent certain that you have that picture in the future you are a billionaire i had it in my head for 14 years i am a billionaire so so when i failed and I, and 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 i got a rejection or a this or a that if i'm a billionaire do i care no i make a next phone call who cares i'm already a billionaire like okay so i lost the $30,000 deal that i wanted like okay it hurts but like i'm a billionaire in 5 years uh, so does in five years, do I care that I lost that deal? No, I don't care. So I, it, it just gave me courage to be able to make the phone calls. Cause if I'm a billionaire, I thought to myself, who wouldn't take my call and who wouldn't want to talk to me. Right. So it just gave me a sense of like, okay, I'm a billionaire. Like I wouldn't say it cause that's embarrassing. And I, you know, I don't want to, to create a, a non-reality with people. <laughs> Um, plus I was scared. Like, what if I don't make it, then I hold myself accountable. But in the same step, I was doing the steps necessary in order to become the person I wanted to be. What do you have to do? Like, you know, to be a confident woman, well, you have to do what you say you're going to do. So start off with something small, drink your gallon of water a day, give yourself little yes. targets. You're going to take your vitamins, check, check, check. I work out three times a week for 
30 minutes, check, check, check. Don't beat yourself up. If if you fail, don't live from the past. Oh, I failed uh, and give the whole thing up. Nope, that's that. I'm disconnected from that. From the future, it's like, okay, so I failed. Who cares? I'm still, this is what I needed to go through in order to become that person. So I needed to go through this training. I needed to take this lesson. I took all kinds of finance courses. I've, speaking, I've spoken on stages. I said yes to every podcast to get myself comfortable talking in front of people, getting over those fears and insecurities you know what i'm saying i did actions necessary to become this person that i want to be in the future and so that's how i hold the vision because i 1 million percent know with certainty that my prescription you know the doing this if you were going to do wanted to to, to ch change your weight um, or, or get physically fit or healthy, you would hire somebody that would know about that. You would follow their direction. You'd, you'd eat what they told you to eat. You wouldn't eat what they told you not to eat. You do your workout. And after three months, your body would physically look different if you actually applied it, right? It's the same exact thing. It's not any different. If you million percent know this is who what you want to be and then filled out your prescription and you did that prescription to give yourself the confidence that this, that that then you have that's the formula it's be do have it's not be do not have it's be do have you don't go oh once i'm a billionaire once i have it then i'll be the person that can make the phone calls or is not afraid to get hung up on that's the problem when i had lived from the past i thought i had to be this famous actress before i had confidence to be able to go up to a big celebrity and say hi so i'd never go up and say hi to him because i never became the the celebrity because i always thought it was in reverse i would have i would get to be it once i have it it's an inverted cycle and okay. unless you know the actual correct cycle it's be do have it's not have once i have all this money then i'll have my confidence no you're never gonna get there exactly so that's right. easy for me to hold my vision because i don't have an inverted cycle it's be do have be do and then you get to have not exactly. you get to be once you have duh Exactly. Oh my God. That was like a mic drop right there. I mean, honestly, I always say you have to become her if you want to be, if you want, whatever it is, you got to become her first. After my divorce, I had to start all over again and um, I had no money and I had to become a wealthy woman and believe that the money was always there. I was thinking like a multimillionaire, multimillionaire. And then the millions came in because I had to believe that it was possible. And this is what a lot of people, you know, they look at their current reality, but if you keep looking at this every single day, then nothing's going to change. You have to also become that person and, and take the action. I mean, yes, meditation is great, but you actually have to be. So this is something I want you guys to take away. You have to put on that belief system of who you want to create now. And then, I mean, you're hearing it right now from, from a billionaire, you know, she's telling you what she believed and what she could be, become. And I think people don't ask, you know, like, I think that they're afraid right. and, to and, do and it. Then, and then the, the, this whole thing that's floating around with um, imposter syndrome and this and this and this, and what do you think of that and all that? And I'm like, well, you know, I don't buy into that because you, because I have to be it before I can have it anyway. So there's always going to be the uncomfortableness until I become, you know, I just became a realtor a couple years, like a couple years ago, like, uh, but I, I still have to assume the beingness, not that I'm going to lie or say, oh, I got realtor of the year award, not, not lie, but like assume the beingness of that before before I actually get validated as like that professional or whatever. But until I'm that, I'm not going to think that I have imposter syndrome because I'm not there yet. Like, because I'm not a black belt doesn't mean I'm an imposter just because I'm in the, the white exactly. belt class. It's no, you, you, you got to go through what you got to go through to earn your stripes, but it doesn't mean I'm an imposter because I'm being it now first. Like, you just, you just do like, you have yeah. to like get comfortable in the skin and do the actions that then validate the havingness of the whole thing that comes along with that later. So, yeah. I have this saying, messy makes me a million. So I would just say, just go take the action, Make, take the messy action. And then the money's going to come. You overthink this stuff. And then that's literally why you'll stay stuck, you know? So just go to do the damn thing, you know? Exactly. And if you fall, yeah. you're still falling forward. Like exactly. I always, I always use that. I needed to go through that in order to expand and become who I'm going to be. 
in the future. So I try to learn from my mistakes. What policies can I apply to help me better going forward rather than using it like the old me of, oh God, I'm, that's never going to like using it as a, as a whipping tool for myself for yourself. You know, like and I you used to do in the past. You give yourself grace too. Like you're figuring it out as you go along. I mean, we have to be nice to ourselves. And I think that's the biggest thing that we're so critical of how we are, especially when you're a high achieving woman, you're always going to be like be, wanting to be critical of yourself and you just got to give yourself some grace. So yeah, that's of- true. And I am still very highly critical and I do hold myself a highly accountable and I'm not saying that's a positive thing, but, um, but we're I still perfect. do that to myself and, but, but I do know the difference between um, being a best friend to myself and doing what I used to do, which is damage myself. Like I used to beat myself up to such a point where, you know, I drink myself into, you know, a blackout or, you know, or do drugs or self numbing stuff. All that stuff is damaging to myself as a spiritual being as, as not only my physical body, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't do that anymore. I just, I'm hard on myself to, to, to push myself up that hill. Right. I mean, always holding yourself to a higher standard is important, you know, but also being appreciative of where you are and celebrating and, and just honoring yourself is a, you I mean, you got to be your own cheerleader in life or else, you know, you just, if you're looking on the outside for that validation, you're always going to be needing it that way. So I always say like, just look from within. And if I can have my own back at a lot of times I can have other people's back. And as I'm moving forward, you know, I love it's, that. It's, it's so important. So, so true. I am. Um, I want to talk about uh, two other things, wealth and motherhood, which is big topics. And we only have a couple of minutes left, but for you to go from where you're from. And I, and I think that I love working with people who, who talk about abundance and are, aren't afraid to embrace what wealth can bring to their life. Like I believe we get to be unapologetically wealthy. If that's what you desire, if you want to have nice things and you want to live at bright a jet and you want to do, I'm like, if it's there for you and you want it, go for it, you know, and if you can make it happen, <clears throat> I know that some people have belief systems that they were raised with. Now you, you grew up and you said that you lived paycheck to paycheck. What was it that decided, like, where did you, where did what was maybe your limiting belief and how did you become so limitless in your wealth thinking? Because there was definitely a shift for you to be go beyond because you like that ceiling. There's just no ceiling. It's like, well, I'm roping to receive, like bring it all in. But there's something that had to, you had to probably rewire or believe something new. Right. Yeah. Because I used to have the belief system plus that, you know, from the book, I was, I kind of had that punk rock mentality, which is, anti-rich, anti, you know, steal from the rich, <laughs> give to the poor kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, I just didn't really have regard for, for people's valuables and stuff. So it was a big shift for me. And, 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 um, I guess I just really started to go on a spiritual journey and really started to understand what is money? What is wealth? How have I confused it? What does it even mean? The derivation, the origin of the word wealthy comes from the word well plus healthy. So it actually means what healthy, wealthy, what healthy. So even just breaking down concepts like that have been able to um, help me get over my blocks. And I, and, and, and I started to write down all of the ideas that I had in me from, I don't know where, I don't even need to analyze from where, but whatever they all were. And I started writing them down and then started to look at, well, how can I see the positive side of that? Or how can I switch it? How can I be open to the possibility that money doesn't make you greedy? Money makes you more philanthropic or, uh, you know, and so I started to break down these concepts that I've had over the years And now I'm just to the point where um, I can have things. It started, it's taken a lot of time and I'm still not fully there yet because even though we hit the billionaire status, like now there's new targets with more investors and people that we want to help along the way. So now it's 10 billion. And then it's, can we get to 40 or 50 and how many people and lives would we have to collaborate with? And what would we all have to do as a group to get there? So in that comparison, I still feel like I'm a, like, like a baby. 
Um, and, and getting your head around that, well, why do you need that? And why do I want that? And is there anything wrong with that? And, um, you know, I hate even saying that I'm a billionaire, like out loud, just between me and you, um, because it feels so uncomfortable. It goes against like whatever is in, ingrained in me. It just feels so nasty, like a bad word, a bad thing. But every time I look at I look at it like two sides. There's the side of abundance and this is your life and you get to create it and it's going to exist for whoever wants it, whether you want it or not, you don't have to have it, but that's this life and these people make that happen. And then there's this life over here that wants you to stay small and think small and not, not totally. be big and not have big influence and not help people change their lives. That's a separate group. So every time I hear myself trying to, you know, have an issue or a problem with it. I think of that group that doesn't want me to help because I know what my purpose is, is I want to help people and I want to expand on, on mankind and, and with my group, you know, my 10 X people are my group. I want them doing well, the better they do, the better I do. It's part of my survival. Like if I'm surviving through my group, right. Just like I'm surviving through my family as grant does good. I do good. When my kids do good, I do good. That's my family unit, my family dynamic. I want my group doing good. I want mankind doing good. So then I actively have to take a role to deliver this side and affect the low. Like, no, I'm not going against, I'm going against you. So when, so when I find it hard to say I'm a billionaire, what do I have to do? I have to say, yes, I'm a billionaire. And, and yes, I own that. And yes, it does mean I'm well. And yes, I am healthy. Well, healthy, you know, and I'm okay with that. And here's why you should be okay with that too. And here's why I'm okay with even going bigger. Cause the bigger I go, the higher somebody else can come because then it's like the shift in the ceiling goes higher for themselves. And the more that they can have, and the more that they can grow and the more that that they can influence their sphere. And usually the people I've been in both places and I'm not condemning right. either. And I know people right. might want to take what I say out of context, but for me, in my reality, I am more happy. Um, not that money makes you happy because obviously if I have a fight with my husband or if some, there's a death in the family, no amount of money is going to change that. I'm going to be devastated. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be upset. So, so money doesn't make you happy, but Am I happier with money and that I can go anywhere and have choices and freedoms and help other people to have choices and freedom and financial legacy and freedom in their lives? Yes, that does make me happier. So I don't know. I'm probably getting off course here. I uh, know this is great. <laughs> that's, that's how I've sort of justified it and looked at it. And, you know, this is my you know, 80, 90 years around this globe. Am I, am, how, how far can I stress myself? How far can the girl from Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana, who was in the, the dumb reading classes, who was told she has a, uh, a severe, what was the word? God, I keep, I always face on this word, a severe comprehension issue or problem or whatever they wanted to say. And, you know, the only reason I did good in school is because I could memorize things, but I always Same. thought I was dumb. I never went to college. You know, how far can this girl go? And, and if I go that far, can I inspire somebody else to tap into who they are and how much power they really have? And, and so that's why I'm just on this sort of spiritual legacy play now. And, 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 and that's why I'm going for the things that I'm going for in the physical universe, because that's how we register things. That's how we measure things. Like that's what, you know, people identify with me a lot because of the things that I have or have created. It's something that they can physically see that have been manifested in the physical universe. And, and so that's one of the reasons why I want to have that and more of that. Plus I like nice things. Oh, yeah, just because you like it. I mean, I that's like okay. It. Like, it's, it's okay. Next level. Like everyone needs Come to on. have a yacht trip in their on their bucket list. Like that is unreal. Like going 
to yeah. the south of France and Italy on a yacht, not having to take suitcases from hotel to hotel and pack and unpack, but you're on a yacht. And then you have people that like bring you carry your stuff for you and, and, stuff. <laughs> and they carry your bags and shopping and you're jet skiing with your, your kids. And it's just like, oh. I'm a lot. And you're in the most beautiful sunsets and, you know, visions of Positano and backdrops it's just like unbelievable it's like wow like why why shouldn't I have this in the 90 years that I have why not why 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 am I not supposed to be uh, traveling around the globe and meeting people and cultures why not why why do I have to be small and not feel good and 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 think that I'm a nobody and a nothing like when that's not who I am it's not who any of us are oh oh my gosh that's exactly what I teach and I preach and I live by I mean going up to Lena status soon you know I mean but it's, seriously it's definitely something that you want to live by I know we're rolling into coming into a close here and I wish we could talk about motherhood a little bit more and stuff, but I love that you take your kids. I travel with my kids as much as I can. I feel like the experiences they have out there, they know I have a saying in my business and I I use this mantra when I had no money and I was moving around. I always told myself more was coming and I allowed myself to believe in the infinite wealth that was out there. And and money is not to make us happy, but it lets me say yes. So many to so many things in my life. Yes. Do I want to do this? And I, and money doesn't control me. I get to now have control over it by saying yes. And I feel like that's what you really expressed here. It's like you get to go create. I know that when we serve, the money will come. When we impact, the money will come. When we chase the money, it's a whole different situation. That's something different. But when you serve and you empower, and I I really want to help women who don't see that there's that wealth out there for them as well, but that's their limitation. And I love the women who are like, you know what? I want it. How big can we go? And I want them to come on board and follow because until the others decide that they can have it too, I can't convince them of that. They have because then I'm just trying to pull them across the finish line and they're not going to want what I want or see things the same way. And they're always going to be their own roadblock. So I, I feel like what you've expressed here today, I know it's probably not your traditional stuff that people talk to you about, but I do know that being is essential to the doing and having. And sometimes people ask you about the having part and how you did it. But I know that it always starts with the being first because you have to become her. You have to start with that because you can go do so many things in life but you don't like two women could do the same thing, but one who's already in that being energy will have a different result than the woman who's just going through the process of things and not believing it's possible or knowing energetically, like she is it and she can have it already. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Be yeah. open to the possibility of, you know, and, and look, they just printed how, how many trillions of dollars. I say this all the time. I'm like, they're, they're pretty everywhere. money. It's like, it's like the ocean. Like, you know, you, you're just attaching that. That's a whole other money course. Yeah, I know. Attaching significances to things. And I love the grant says, who's got your money? Who's got my money? It's people, it's connections. It's, it's, it's meeting people and, and marketing and promoting and getting out there. And how much of it do you want? And you wouldn't think it was strange to go to a beach with your little bucket and, and pull out sh- however much water you can possibly shovel out. You can take dump trucks, you can whatever. You're not doing a dent into that ocean of water. You can have as much of it as you want. No one's even going to notice you took a drop. And That's the it. same thing is there for money. You're just not... Um, you're you, for whatever considerations that you have about it. Um, that's when I would ask you to look at what are your what are your considerations about money? Or do you think you can't make money? Okay, well it's illegal to make money. So like, look at it. You know, like you can't make money. You can just exchange it and let it circulate. You know, if you think, oh well, only my husband makes the money. Like, just look at the all the ideas that you have. Like, I can't make money because of this or that. And then once you get all these ideas out of your head, you can start to think of it and just, wow, like, can I be open to the idea that I can generate money too? And, and then you start opening yourself up to these other ideas and concepts. Well, yeah, I can, I can start doing a podcast or I could do my masterminds or I could sell my, my makeup or I could become a realtor and have people in, but whatever it is for you, like all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a minute. Like that was an idea and a concept that was keeping me in this limited little cage. But once you start to examine it and look at it, can I, can I break this bar off the cage? And then can I break that bar off the cage? And then before you know it, all the bars are off and you're, you know, you're off to the races flying around exactly oh my gosh with that 
I, unfortunately we probably have to end because Elena is a busy woman, but there's, I have to have you back. Cause I've, there's so many things I'd love to ask you about motherhood and just about, I mean, the way that they use their money too, the way they invest it, you guys all should be doing this too with how you run your money and to have your money working for you like little soldiers, but that's a whole nother, you know, um, podcast episode, but I, I will talk a little bit about it because definitely go follow her. I, I wanted to just say that, that, everything starts with a vision, just as Elena said, and you have to be able to dream beyond where you are right now. And I hope that when you listen to this podcast, you will expand beyond where you are right now and start seeing life in the limitless as opposed to the limited. And um, if if you see powerful women doing it, that means that there's a possibility that you can do it too. And I believe that Elena is one of the most gifted, emotionally connected, feminine uh, woman that's in her power right now that really does support other women and go connect with her. Elena, can you just explain what, just, I, I think they should know about your Bay event coming up and um, just how they can get in contact with you and how they can follow you. Yeah. So Elena Cardone, which is E-L-E-N-A, Elena Cardone, and then car and done Elena Cardone, um, dot com. I have everything there. I do an empire Academy, which is for build an empire masterminds a year. The first one is, um, the first one is on empire mindset. The second one is dynamic relationships. The third one is master your money. And four is design your life. And that's about how to manifest it all to actually become uh, apparent to the eye. And I do them uh, once a quarter for the year. Um, and it's a two day, we go through the workbook. So by the time you leave each one of those masterminds you have your own workbook so it's literally you've written your blueprint to exactly get you on the path of your doing this for your having this and um and and you can't do it without an empire mindset because the rest of the pillars are going to collapse and you can't have your empire mindset golden and not have your money in place uh, because that'll crush the little structure you know these are the four pillars right the the mindset, the relationships. I mean, you need relationships on this planet. So how do you get those? How do you filter out the toxic ones and fortify the straight ones and get everyone on the same page working together? That's dynamic relationships. So the, the and and then the the design your life is that lifestyle, the health and wellness. And the concept is, is how do you get all four of them so freaking rock solid strong that then you can build the foundation for your empire on top of those four unbreakable pillars. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I really wanted to ask you, what do you need to do to build empire? We didn't have time, but this is where it is now. And if you are thinking about building empire, which you all are, everybody wants the power couple. I don't know. I don't care who you are, but they want a power couple be a power couple and they want the, uh, to build the empire. So go follow Elena. I'm so glad to have you on the show. It's been such an honor to have you here. And I, I completely appreciate having you. Oh, I love being on and just, just promise me we can do a part two. Mm -hmm.